What's up y'all and welcome back to the A Ray Show. Before I start, I just want to thank you guys for watching my videos and giving me likes. I really appreciate that. And with that, today we've got my top five pieces of advice that will help new investors to get started with investing. Without further ado, cue that music. So with that bumping intro out of the way, let's get started. So for the first piece of advice I got for you guys is time in the market beats timing the market. So what this means is if you look at the stock market and approach it with a buy and hold long term strategy, you're more likely to succeed and you're going to do better off than you are if you try to time the market. So if you look at the S&P 500 index right here that we've got, you can see it's continuously going up and at the end of the day, you're going to end up green. So. Of course, there's going to be dips and peaks here and there, but if you buy and hold and you never sell and you reinvest those dividends, you're going to be doing a lot better off. And at the end of the day, it's a lot more safer as well. And let's be honest, if you try to time the bottoms and peaks, it's a lot more harder than than you think it is because, you know, you're going to have to get lucky to even time the bottom. But on top of that, to time the peak as well, it's, it's near impossible. You know, if you try to do that, you can end up looking like this. And there's also no guarantee that you're going to be making a profit. So with the next part, I want to show you guys a research, a research study that was created to show the power of buying and holding. Okay, so this is the really popular research study that was done to show why buying and holding is very important. All right, so literally all the YouTubers do the same research study in their videos, but that just shows why it's very important. Okay, so let's get right into it. So we've got three friends here. They all save $200 per month. So for 41 years, so that would be $99,000. And I'm not gonna go too much into the number crunching aspect. Um, I just wanna show you guys why uh, buying and holding is important. So I'll leave a link in the description. And quick shout out to Personal Finance Club. These graphics are pretty dope and it's, it's just clean. All right, so with that, let's get right into it. So we've got three friends, Tiffany, Brittany, and Sarah. So Tiffany is the world's most terrible market timer. So she's gonna, buy and sell at the worst timing then we've got Brittany, who's the world's per most perfect um timer so she's gonna buy and sell at the perfect timings and then we've got sarah who just takes those 200 dollars per month and she does that buy and hold long-term strategy so with that you can just see these are these are going to be the crashes that you can see so like for example Brittany, she's the one that times it perfectly so she's gonna buy this dip and then she's gonna sell at this peak so with that, I want you guys to pause it real quick and guess who's going to do the best. So we've got Tiffany, who's the terrible, Brittany, who is the most perfect timer in the world. And then we've got Sarah, who, who's the most steady, which is means she does $200 per month. Okay, so if you guys just want to pause, guess, and we'll get right with the results. All right, so you can see that Sarah won. She has the most money by far. And that's just because she she's not timing the market, but in fact, she's has time in the market. So you can see that time in the market beats time in the market every single time. So you want to get into the market as soon as you can. Even if you don't know what you're doing, just invest into an index fund. Keep it in there and let it grow until you develop a strategy. OK, so piece of advice number two, and this one's probably arguably the most important one, and that's to figure out what type of investor you are and what type of strategy you like to follow through with. As you can see, there's a bunch of different investment strategies, but the thing is not every single investment strategy is going to be valuable to every single type of investor. For example, if you're an older man, you're you're looking to retire in the next four or five years, growth investing will not suit you you're more likely to work towards indexing or a different type of strategy. But on the other hand, if you're in your early 20s where your risk tolerance is a lot higher, you're probably better off working with growth investing or dividend growth investing. On the contrary, it's honestly, it's good to have a bunch of different brokerage accounts where you can try and practice with each and every single one. For example, I have a Robinhood account and I'm going to be completely transparent with you guys. I started off as a day trader to think I could become a millionaire by the time like the year was over. But honestly, that didn't work for me. And I shifted more towards a growth investing uh, strategy. And that was a little bit better for me. And then after that, I figured out um, I can open a different brokerage account which I opened an M1 finance account where I could try dividend growth investing. And that one really worked for me. So opening up multiple accounts, uh, brokerage accounts can really help you get your feet wet and see what strategy you like. 
For example, I really, really like dividend growth investing, and that's the one that I want to focus on, and that's the one that I would like to retire with. And this is just a quick sneak peek of my dividend diversity portfolio, which is pretty much what I was talking about earlier. I'll leave a link in the description. I'm planning to do a video on this sooner or later, but this right here is my plan to retire early. Um, I'll leave all the links in the description below. Um, if you want to sign up with M1 Finance, Robinhood, Webull, or all, any of the other brokerage accounts, the link will be in the description. Okay, so piece of advice number three, conquer emotions. So if you don't know who this is, this is basically the GOAT investing. He is the legend himself. Uh, he's the Michael Jordan investing. And while actually, you know what? While we're actually talking about basketball, let me just quickly plug myself. So I have a YouTube channel with a couple of my friends where we do a podcast about basketball and the NBA. If you guys want to take a look, the link is going to be in the description. We're also on Spotify and Apple Podcasts at the East Coast Browncast. Okay, so going back to this legend here, one of his quotes that you're probably going to see everywhere once you get into investing is be fearful when there's greed and be greedy when there's fear. So essentially, he's giving us a way to kind of learn to conquer our emotions. So this right here is just a percentage change in S&P 500 this year. So obviously there was a big pandemic this year um, and a lot has happened. So essentially what he's saying is be greedy when others are fearful. So when people were afraid of the stock market crashing, he was buying on these dips. As you can see, the market bounced back and rebounded all the way. And now he's completely fine. He's made all this profit right here what like a 30 percent increase if you bought like crazy right here and we can do that if we, we learn to control our emotions at the end of the day you want to avoid mistakes like panic selling panic selling is when you get scared and you end up selling at the wrong moment for example you sell here which you'd be taking a huge loss instead of just holding it through the whole time averaging down and helping your long-term position and that's one of the cool things about investing all these advices kind of link up together for example if you're doing that long-term buy and hold strategy if you don't sell if you don't get scared and you conquer emotions you won't take this huge loss in fact you just be averaging down and it'll help build your long-term position piece of advice number four is diversification diversification can be like a double-edged sword it could be either really good for you or it could be really bad for you it just depends on what type of investor you are and what type of knowledge that you have. For example, for new investors that don't know what they're doing, diversification is a key to minimize risks and maximize their reach on all asset classes and all different types of sectors. So it's a classic saying of don't put all your eggs in one basket. So if you don't really know what you're doing, it's a good way to reach all different types of um, sectors. For example, you could do some energy, some real estate, some tech, all these different types of sectors that you have no idea, but at least you're, you're reaching into them. But if you do know what you're doing, then if you know what asset classes and sectors that you're good with and they're working for you, you don't want to diversify into something that you don't know. For example, uh, Warren Buffett, he never diversifies into something that he doesn't know, that he doesn't have research or knowledge about. You can also diversify into different types of asset classes. A lot of people go into real estate. They make a good amount of money that way. They don't just do just stocks or bonds or they don't just have their money in one place. It's good to be able to spread out and reach different asset classes. I can give you one example of myself. I buy a lot of hype sneakers and I resell them for a profit. That's just one asset class. There's tons of different ones. There's right now Pokemon cards are really big. You can do baseball cards, Funko Pops. There's a bunch of different things that you can go into. Real estate is probably one of the better ones to go into. But if you don't have the capital for that, I would recommend hype sneakers and I'll do a future video on that piece of advice is to do your own due diligence and your own research. So what this means is don't listen to everyone and believe everything you see on the internet. People say things because, you know, it will only benefit them in the long run and they just say it to manipulate you. Of course, this includes me too. Don't believe everything that I say. Of course, I'm going to try to be as transparent as possible, but just because I invested into a certain stock doesn't mean that you have to unless you determine with your own research that is good for you. One other thing that I want you guys to learn is to be able to read charts and learn to comprehend all these analytical tools and charts and things like that. You know, obviously it's going to look really intimidating at first, but it's going to help you in the long run. Even at first, this this screenshot here of this chart or and all these things over here, that was super intimidating for me. It looks super foreign, but honestly, it's simple to read. And it's just one thing that you get better at over time. You know, you want to keep practicing. You want to just keep looking. You want to just look up anything that you can to help you out and just keep doing your research. It's going to be good for you in the long run. And with that said, that's all I got for y'all. I appreciate you guys for watching this video and making it this far. 
leave a comment below on your favorite piece of advice or email me if you have any questions or anything like that. I read everything and I check all my emails, so go for it. If, you've, if you guys found any value in this video, leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Check out my other channel if you want to see a podcast with me and my friends where we talk NBA and ball. With that said, everybody eats and peace out.